Be sure to stay tuned to see how I get great results with salt chipping. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs in Switzerland. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a 1 to 59 scale Matchbox VW delivery van. It's a pretty popular model, I've seen them around. I got this one in a mail call from my near neighbor in Luxembourg. Shoddy's diecast. Thanks again Eve. It took a while but this one finally gets its turn on the hobby bench. And I've got some ideas for it. This is my entry to the Diecast Graveyard Super Huge Ginormous Build-Off Part 2 on the theme of your favorite sweet or candy. There are five parts to this ongoing build-off. Each one has its own recap video where you can vote on your favorite casting. So I hope you'll remember a friend in Switzerland when that time comes around. In the meantime, get a fresh hot cup of coffee and enjoy this video of the construction of my entry. A little bit of an effort to get that one piece glass out. It's smoked, but it's in good condition. There's a large one piece, all black interior. You're not going to see much of that. And the base with some easily removable axles. You just spread those tabs out. I try not to break those so I can reuse them when I put the wheels back in. I'll look for some replacements for those. Plastic base. And a couple of flea bites on that die cast body. But that just means it was well loved and played with. That's all there is. That's all I need for today. I get my paint stripper across the border in France. It's really intense. So I use some appropriate PPE. I'm all masked up. The spray booth fan is running and I've got a large open window right next to me. It only takes about 30 seconds for the gel stripper to eat right through to the bare metal. Please use every precaution when you're doing this at home. A good warm soapy water wash up follows the paint stripping and then it's on to this workbench for some bare metal detail. I'm not going to do a polished finish today so I don't have to be too concerned about the outcome of this stage but I still take time to be thorough if not perfect. Lots of good stuff coming up here on my channel in the coming weeks. The month of March is my YouTube anniversary date, and I'd like you to join in on my annual all Porsche build-up. The upload date is March 16th, so there's still time for you to send in your submission. On the theme of candy and sweets, living in Switzerland as I do, I figure I've got the market cornered on chocolates. I've chosen to go with a Toblerone theme for this build. I found a couple of pics of vehicles online and this old Corgi delivery van is my main inspiration pick. It's got a couple of rust freckles on it and I'm going to show you how I do salt chipping as a weathering technique today. I begin with a solid rust colored primer as my base coat. Here I'm just putting some spots of different Vallejo model air paints on, orange, yellow, it's random, it's just patchy. This is what will be revealed underneath, so don't worry about my paint skills as you watch this. Middle stone is a lighter brown, natural rust forms in many different colors. And I even put a couple of blotches of black on there. This is my result pre-salt chipping. I let that dry up thoroughly. I fill my airbrush reservoir with water and lightly mist the casting. The airbrush atomizes this better than a squirt bottle. I don't want droplets on here. 
Now I'm sprinkling the moist body with salt. I'm using sea salt because it's a little more coarse. You can use rock salt. You can use household table salt. The idea is just to get some speckles on here. It sticks to the wet surface. And there's no right or wrong amount. I want mine to be heavily rusted. So I'm covering a fairly large surface area. Knock off where I think it's got a little bit too much. Couple of taps on the top to knock off the loose bits. I'll let that harden up. That's when I mix up a light blue to match that corgi van that I showed you a moment ago. I turn the pressure down on the airbrush and lightly spray over top of the salt, which is on top of the rust body colors. Don't worry if a little bit blows off, that just adds to the rough textured effect that you want to get here. So you can use any color you've got, that doesn't affect the process. And it looks like that. I let the paint harden up and we'll get back to that in a moment. Today's community shout out goes to Bullet Tony Customs. You can follow the link I've left in the description to see his collecting and hunting and custom videos. You'll enjoy it very much. Toblerone chocolates are pure Swiss. The triangular shape of the bar is commonly believed to be inspired by the Matterhorn, Switzerland's most famous mountain. It's got an outline of a bear hidden inside. The old Swiss word for bear is Bern, the symbol of our capital city and Toblerone headquarters. The product's name is a combination of the Tobler family name and the Italian word Tarone, a type of nougat. Fun fact, the Toblerone brand was trademarked in 1909 and a young Albert Einstein who was working at the patent office at the time might well have been involved in the process. Okay, my blue top coat is hardened up now and it's time to remove the salt, which is dried underneath with a stiff bristled toothbrush or anything similar. And you'll see this very natural looking rust effect appear in different colors as were sprayed on top of the base coat. I try to be fairly thorough here, but any imperfections or residue that's left just adds to the 3D relief surface effect that you want to have. I could never hand paint that on that way. The next step is to take a couple more rust colors and an old piece of sponge and just add a few more freckles. Very light, again, rust appears at different ages as different colors. It's always changing, and this is going to add to the realism of your salt chipping process. Add as much or as little as you want for your project. There's always room for a happy little accident here. <laughs> Instead of a sponge, you can use a worn out old paintbrush with stiff bristles for this stage. It's just a different technique that will render the same effect. My casting has some chrome highlights on it, including the VW badge on the nose. So I'm using an X-Acto knife to just scrape away some, but not all of the rust. So they stand out a little bit more. And I go down the chrome strip in along the sides too. Panel liner gives you a very striking effect in any of the shot lines like the doors or the window frames. And all you do is Touch it on there and watch it naturally run along any of the recesses. That's a nice effect. I've also got some rust wash in my inventory. It will help to naturally discolor some of the blue, in my case, and bring out the freckles that I've put on there. What do you think? 
These are the original wheels that came on the Matchbox. I'm going to label them and set them aside for another day. And out of this four years accumulation of unused but not discarded wheels, I found another set from Matchbox from the 914, which was a VW Porsche combined effort. And these have more of the familiar look to the VW cars. Zoom, zoom. I flip it over and do a little bit of detail on the exhaust system, including a bit more rust wash on the hubcaps. Then I distress the undercarriage with some mud and dirt effects. Dab on a few more freckles for consistency, and I re-chrome the front and the rear bumpers. All right, back to my inspiration pick. I've copied the Tobler logo on a light blue, almost off-green background. And I want the rust to show through here because if the car is weathered, the signage is going to be well weathered too. Look at the effect I get as I lay a near transparent decal on top of the rusted body. Exactly the effect I was going for. I like that. The whole thing looks aged. A little identification on the bottom and after some matte clear coat and an overnight rest, it's ready to go back together. I made a little spiderweb crack in the front windshield using the tip of my X-Acto knife. There's the plastic base, some weathering on the chrome bumpers, and the swapped out wheels. The glass just presses back into place. I never touch the interior because it doesn't really show in the end. Two tabs in the back and there's one screw to hold the front down. Then we can put the Toblerone delivery van to bed. Let's have a closer look. The overall effect that I wanted to get was an abandoned van that's been left out in the field behind the barn for 50 years or so. Faded and worn out signage, freckled rust spots in different colors, cracked windshield. Those are closer to VW wheels. Here's what I started with at the beginning of the week. Thanks again to Shoddy's Diecast for supplying the casting. And this is the Chocolate Tobler or Toblerone delivery van. Once going from town to town and country to country, but long since abandoned as part of the fleet. Look at the effects that I get super close up of the rusted surface. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed watching and picked up some salt chipping tips. I invite you to leave your respectful comments below and tell me what your favorite candy or sweet is. I'll finish with making a custom display case that has a holographic certificate of authenticity and the build number and proudly display the Swiss Tobler logo from one of their old advertising posters. There it is. Thanks for visiting my channel today. Be sure to check out all of the super huge ginormous build of candy builds and come on back soon and often. It's chocolate and coffee time. <laughs>